Grandfather went down on it, and uh, I was told this is a boy in uh, the town where I came from, Paul Dorset, that uh, he went down. Uh, his name was Shannon. He came from uh, Queenstown, County Cork, which is now called Cove. When I inquired into uh, his place on the boat, his pa on the passenger list, there was no name of Shannon. Uh, last year I went back to Paul. My uncle told me he changed his name to um, Leonard, L. Leonard. No, I lost my grandfather on the Titanic. He was a fireman on board, and his name was Charles Middleton. He was originally born in Leicester, and the, with the, there was a recession in the early part of the century, and he came to stand south and seat work in the dockyard. His first job was a labourer in the dockyard. I don't know if there's a lorry driver or something like that he was. And then he signed on board the Titanic, but he forged his age to get onto the ship because he wasn't old enough. And the same then, um, he lost his life at sea with it. He went down on board. And I believe he was working down below when it went down. He hadn't got a chance of being saved. And his son, which is my dad, he was on the Olympic. Well, I told you yesterday that many Southampton people had relatives on the Titanic. Well, I've just been passed a little note there from our captain, who says that his uncle, Tom Knowles, sailed on the Titanic, happily survived. He was on the line from Mexican, because he was a passenger in a cargo ship, and he left to join the Titanic. He was a chief stoker. And what he did was the dockhead jump, which in 1912, when the Ukraine dame and all your gear sat alongside the gangplank and hoped, just hoped, that there was going to be a place for you on the ship if the members of the crew that had been engaged had, didn't turn up. In this case, somebody didn't turn up, so he went and sailed on the Titanic. His wife didn't even know that he'd sailed on, sailed on her until after she had sung. Yes. Captain Smith, Edward Smith, <laughs> he was uh, a great, great uncle. <laughs> Because of course my mother knew him very well and we heard all about him being children and so of course about him being children would always be very interesting. My husband was right in the key position on the front there with his cine camera. <laughs> I'm here because my husband is very keen on the Titanic and the story and so I come along with him to enjoy the weekend here. And this is a very historic moment, isn't it? Uh, my name's Colin Westland Garnet, which I'm afraid is rather a mouthful. And we are from northeast Aberdeenshire. Uh, my uncle, James Fraser, was the third engineer on the Titanic. The significance between Aberdeenshire and Southampton is that the family, as families did, living together in those days, all moved down in 1908. My grandfather was a master man and he was sailing out of Malaysia. So when James uh, joined, the White Star, the whole family came into Southampton, you see. He was brought across from uh, New York, especially, as you know, to get onto the Titanic was a very prestigious situation. And he was brought back especially for this. They were all, I understand, overqualified. Now, the astonishing to me, I mean, this is obviously not only a bit of history, uh, very significant history, uh, it's also very much a bit of family history, as you'll appreciate. James Fraser, the third engineer on the Titanic, he went down at the age of 29. 30 years later, his son, with the same name, the same age, was torpedoed on convoy duty and went down almost at the identical situation, the identical position in the Atlantic. I, I find this quite remarkable. My name is Martin, my middle name is Lightoller, final name is Smith, and uh, Commander Lightoller was my mother's second cousin. In other words, it was her father's uh, brother. And uh, I did meet him, uh, I was very young at the time, and uh, I've always followed the, uh, the story, I've always uh, been interested in it. I passed the name on to my uh, young son as well, as his middle name. And uh, I think the thing that I remember most was the method of his survival because he was a Christian scientist. My mother is a Christian scientist. And the belief of the Christian science is that your body is above your spirit. And when the Titanic went down, he was apparently sucked. He jumped overboard as it slid down. He was apparently sucked towards the funnel 
and uh, as the water reached the engines, so it created an enormous explosion, it blew him out. And he was in those waters for 20 minutes or so before he was rescued. And he puts down his survival to this um, belief in Christian science. Uh, Christian science, and he float. He was able to float his body, able to float above the water and ignore the pain. Well, that's uh, one of the things I do remember most. I have something in common with uh, a couple of people here that uh, I'm also a survivor of uh, another shipwreck, which was the Herald of Free Enterprise. Uh, with a loss of life, 193. Um, quite a few, uh, big proportion of the crew, 50%, uh, died on that night. The same as the Titanic in Southampton here. They, a lot of the crew perished on that night. I, I once spoke to Burton Dean, I, I met in London, and uh, I said to him, have you coped over the years? Did you, you know, suffer in any way, or did it keep, you have nightmares or anything like this? because I wanted to know, foresee my own future, if you like. And uh, he said, I, I don't know. He said, I was only two at the time. I can't remember a thing about it. Um, so really, I, I, I believe that, we, you know, I, I sort of remember it. I recall it um, quite often, really. And I suppose in a, in a fitting way, it's uh, my own, yeah, it's part of remembering the, the crew and passengers on, on the day in question, really. So. Um, which uh, now, now over a period of years since the Herald was capsized, um, I've come to terms with it. She went grey, her hair went grey overnight pretty well when she was 19. My aunt herself would never ever talk about the Titanic and she wouldn't help when they were making the film. She didn't want to know any more about it at all. There have been many films made of Titanic. Um, this one with Clifton Webb and Barbara Stanwyck and a very young Robert Wagner was made in the 1950s. It was a fair success, but it was nowhere near as successful as the next one, which was A Night to Remember, the very famous one by Walter Lord. This is probably the most famous film ever made and will probably remain so. Walter Lord had great access to, I think it was over 60 survivors and their recollections that he used for the book helped obviously with the book itself but they were also used as, or a lot of them were used as technical advisors in the film itself to ensure accuracy even today i mean this film is, is an amazing film when you look at it my children and i love it i think the main interest in titanic has been the mystique um when Dr. Ballard found the ship. Some of the mystique was gone. People seemed to expect to see her sitting bolt upright on the seabed with all her funnels, which of course is ludicrous. But then they found her in two pieces, which proved parts of uh, some of the witnesses' accounts of the time who said that she went in half, and most people didn't believe that either. Since Ballard has found her, more and more people I find have got interested, especially younger people. Children are doing projects all over the world, both here in America, Canada, all over the place, on Titanic. We find we get up people approaching us from schools, literally worldwide, with just information on the ship, which is one of the reasons we did the book, so that the school libraries especially can refer to the book with all the newspaper accounts, instead of spending a long time doing research at various libraries. But it's a wide age, age group. It literally covers people from Oh, I don't know, children from three or four years old that watch A Night to Remember or something like that, up to adults in their 70s, 80s, some of who can actually recollect seeing the ship sail down to the Hampton Water. The interest is tremendous. It varies literally from books, films, newspapers, um, music, chinaware, to collecting people's personal accounts and collecting signatures of the survivors on postal covers, postcards and things like that. The interest has grown so much over the last few years that there are one specialist auctioneer in London who have annually a Titanic sale and that creates tremendous interest, a lot of media attention as well. We find because our shop is in Northern, which is one of the main areas of the crew members or where the crew members live, that we get quite a lot of people coming in just for a chat and they say, oh, 
my great uncle was on the Titanic or my grandfather was on the ship and some were saved, some went down with the ship. And we can guarantee, I, I should think, at least once a month, somebody fresh comes in and is associated with Titanic. Uh, the classic one is the lady who came in one day and said that she has a set of Titanic chinaware, you know, a tea set. Well, I didn't believe her. She described the china, and then it turned out that her parents ran a guest house in Southampton. Some of the Titanic's crew, especially the uh, petty officers and officers, were billeted with various families or hotels and places like that. And the second steward, in this case, took the family on a tour of the ship. The mother commented about how nice the china was, and just before Titanic sailed, a box arrived with the tea service. And the tea service is still here, somewhere in Northern, within a mile or so of where we're standing today, all wrapped up. And hopefully, you know, it's the kind of thing that ought to go into a museum. So Hampton Museum has got a good collection of Titanic items. It varies from uh, Captain Smith's sword to, you know, personal things from some of the survivors and some of the crew members who went down with the ship. Very good, interesting collection down there. The watch. The watch. Uh, okay, yes, and that was the uh, telegram mother received to confirm that he hadn't been saved. He was one of those that, uh, that happily, as they thought, transferred from the Olympic to the Titanic, which was in effect, you know, the prestige ship, of course, of the day. And they could not have bid up reservations about the Olympic because she had one or two accidents. And, and in fact, I got a, a letter written only in January 1912 where they, she damaged a propeller. And of course, to get on the unsinkable Titanic was really something. It was just ironic, it didn't work out that way. But um, the, we tried to find out the time from the hand. It would seem that he went in the water of 8.10 to 2. That's how I worked it out. And uh, his body was found according to mother's story by fishermen, and they buried him at sea, of course, and uh, sent all the effects back, which mother had, which came in my possession when she died. She lived to 86. And so I thought, you know, it'd be nice to donate it here where I knew they had an exhibit. And uh, I'm even more pleased since I've come to this convention, because people are so genuinely interested, and they're getting a lot of pleasure out of seeing these things. So it's really nice to know that uh, you know, people are getting this satisfaction. Yeah.